hello guys welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to do a, a quick proof of uh, the product representation for the sine function so let's get started so before starting anything uh, with this proof and uh, it's pretty evident from the title of this page that i'm going to use fourier series but let me explain some theory so from while well, some of my past videos we know that the fourier series of any function on um, a periodic interval so fourier series basically express any function f of x on a periodic interval in terms of some sine and cosine series so the formula for this is a naught over 2 which is like some initial value sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n times cosine of n x plus sum from n equals 1 to infinity of b sub n times sine of n x so we can express any function on a periodic interval in terms of some linear combination of cosine and sine terms and these coefficients a n and b n depend on n so they are sort of weights so when we are representing f of x these a n and b n tell us how much how much cosine nature there is in when we basically try to express f of x in terms of cosine and sine so if b n is greater for a particular value of n then that uh, for that iteration f of x has more sine nature rather than cosine nature so that's how these weights work so these are variable coefficients it's more like they depend on n so for every n they're dynamically changing their functions of n themselves so this is a regular fourier series but for the purposes of this proof that i'm going to do in this video i'm going to define something that's called the complex fourier series the complex Fourier series so in that case f of x again periodic can be defined as integral from n equals negative uh, sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of c sub n times e to the i n x so notice uh, we call it complex Fourier because there is this um, polar representation of complex numbers so and the cn sort of works as a combined an and bn that's because e to the i n x can be expressed as cosine of n x plus i times sine of n x so if we break this up we obtain a cosine and a sine just like our original fourier series except we have this imaginary component and it has it has complex numbers it deals with complex numbers i'll say it's more complete rather than this because it this upper fourier series doesn't completely you know use complex numbers give out complex numbers because there is no i so it can't give out complex numbers as such compared to this so cn is sort of a combined coefficient of cosine and sine so it's sort of an and bn fused together and similar to how to calculate a an and bn for a regular fourier series cn can be calculated by 1 over 2 pi times integral from minus pi to pi of f of x times e to the negative i n x dx this formula is actually based on ortho orthogonality relations and uh, you know that's I, i'm just saying that for people who, who are studying linear algebra or or are, are you know know all this stuff i'm not going to explain everything now so we're basically going to write f of x an arbitrary function of x in terms of some weighted uh, coefficients times e to the i n x summing from negative infinity to infinity now the trouble is for our given proof we actually there is there is no real intuition as to how we are choosing our f of x but let's consider f of x 
to be cosine of a times x where a can be some number and again why we chose cosine of ax is actually a big thing i mean you can after you practice many of these fourier series then you'll have a sense then you have some sense of judgment as to what function of x to choose i mean if you remember one of my videos we had n cubed in the denominator i think sine of n minus 1 over minus 1 to the n times sine of n over n cubed for this we had chosen f of x to be x cubed again because again practice and intuition some judgment that we had that and then we plugged this into this and for this we got a nice value and it was you should check that out if you haven't so similarly we've chosen cosine of ax and so let's we need to represent cosine of ax in terms of cn and e to the i nx so let's calculate cn it's 1 over 2 pi times integral from negative pi to pi of cosine of ax times e to the negative i n x dx. So I'm going to call this integral i and let's do this freshly. So i is integral from minus pi to pi of cosine of ax times e to the negative i n x. And it's pretty evident we have to use integration by parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be integrating this while I differentiate this so again integrate always for both cases so we have sine of ax divided by a because of the reverse chain rule and the second differentiable function as it is evaluated from minus pi to pi minus integral of again sine of ax over a as it is and e to the minus i n x but when we differentiate we have we have to multiply by minus i n so minus minus plus i n dx so plugging stuff in we basically have sine of a pi over a times e to the minus i n pi and uh, we have a minus so we have a minus and a minus original minus and then sine of negative pi will be minus sine pi so both these minuses will basically become a plus sine of a pi over a e to the i n pi now okay that's this term then we can take i and a outside common i n over a outside common this integral from minus pi to pi so then when we integrate this we get negative cosine of a x over a times e to the negative i n x evaluated from minus pi to pi and then uh, a minus because of this and the original minus of integration by parts will make a plus and then minus because of this derivative of e to the minus i n x so in total we have minus i n over a integral from minus pi to pi of cosine of a x times e to the negative i n x dx So now notice e to the e to the i n pi can be expressed as e to the i pi to the n power e to the i pi is minus 1 that is to the n and e to the negative i n pi is also minus 1 to the n so we have minus 1 to the n and minus 1 to the n so we have minus 1 to the n times then two of these these terms are same so 2 times sine of a pi over a and then we have minus i n a then when we plug stuff in we have cosine of a pi actually we can you know take the another a outside so a square e to the minus i n pi minus cosine of negative a pi is just cosine of a pi cosine is an even function when we have e to the 
i n pi and then over here we have minus i squared n squared over a squared and what is this that's just i the i that we started with i so i is equal to all these things let's take this term on the other side so we have i and 1 i squared is negative 1 so we'll have a plus here that we and when taken on that side we'll have a negative minus n squared over a squared and we have minus 1 to the n and 2 times sine of a pi over a these two terms are same and then cosine of a pi cosine of a pi same so both of these terms are same if you subtract to uh, the same expression from itself this will become 0 so all this just went to 0 okay so now we can take this factor on the other side so we have minus 1 to the n times 2 sine a pi over a and then we'll have a squared over a squared minus n squared so now this a will cancel out we have uh, minus 1 to the n times 2 sine a pi a over a squared minus n squared so that's i but what was i actually a part of it was part of this cn that we had to find so cn is just i over 2 pi so cn is just this over 2 pi so 1 over 2 pi times minus 1 to the n times 2 times sine of a pi multiplied with a over a squared minus n squared so the twos will cancel we have a over pi as it is so uh, a over pi minus 1 to the n times sine of a pi divided by a squared minus n squared so that's c sub n that we have so now let's plug c sub n into this expression um, so this is our c sub n and if you remember f of x according to original definition could be expressed as sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of c sub n times e to the i n x so now if we plug stuff in we have sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of c sub n is 1 over pi times minus 1 to the n times sine of a pi and a over a squared minus n squared so all the terms that don't depend on n can be taken outside so we have sine of a pi over pi times a and we have sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of so we forgot the e to the i n x that's important don't forget that minus 1 to the n times e to the i n x divided by a squared minus n squared but what is f of x equal to that's right cosine of ax that's the original function that we wanted to express in terms of this form and now let's do a, a, a nice trick over here so let x equal pi we're specifying an x so we have cosine of a pi is equal to sine of a pi a over pi sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of minus 1 to the n e to the i n pi over a squared minus n squared and what that does is e to the i n pi is minus 1 to the n so sine of a pi a over pi sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity minus 1 to the n minus 1 to the n over a squared minus n squared minus 1 to the 2n this will be in the numerator and uh, 
minus one being raised to an even power two and it will always be even will always be one so all this goes to one so we have cosine of a pi is equal to sine of a pi a over pi and the sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of 1 over a squared minus n squared so now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the sign to that side so we have cosine of a pi over sine of a pi it's nothing but uh, a over pi times sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of 1 over a squared minus n squared Co cosine of an angle over sine of the same angle is cotangent of, the, of that angle and we have a over pi sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of 1 over a squared minus n squared and this is what we call the mittag leffler definition mittag leffler expansion rather of of the cotangent and again, we can again simplify this. Uh, the mittag leffler has, you know, many other forms. So notice that we can take the pi on that side. So we have pi times cotangent of a pi is equal to sum from n equals negative infinity to infinity of a over a squared minus n squared. And now since this is this is going to be even right because it's n squared right so n, n squared is going to be even for all negative and positive so we have pi times cotangent of a pi so we can split this up into sum from n equals negative infinity to negative 1 of a over a squared minus n squared plus sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a over a squared minus n squared but we're we're forgetting n equals zero. So if when we plug n equals zero, we just obtain a one over a a because a over a squared is one over a for n equals zero. So that's the entire mm, splitting up of this sum. But notice that even if you plug in a negative n, n is being squared. So it doesn't matter if it's a negative or positive. This is going to be the same for all negative positive n so essentially this is equal to this so pi times cotangent of a pi can be expressed as 2 times sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a over a squared minus n squared right because of symmetry plus 1 over a so you can say this is the mittag leffler expansion of the cotangent I mean I you can choose either you can either have a complete minus infinity to infinity or you can have this one one to infinity depends on you okay so at this point I'm going to do a really unique step I'm going to integrate both sides indefinitely obviously with respect to a and a you can say it's a constant how can we integrate but see a was not defined right it's it's never defined a can be anything so for our purposes it can be considered as an independent variable so if we do if we do that we have basically integral of pi times cotangent of a pi is equal to integral of 2 times sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a over a squared minus n squared um, forgot the da plus integral of 1 over a da so this is going to be pi and then integral of this is natural log of um, sine of a pi but you have to divide by pi for reverse chain rule is equal to we can interchange the sum and in integral assuming uniform and absolute convergence we have integral of 
a over a squared minus n squared dA. This is easy. Natural log of a. So we have the pi is cancelling out. We just have natural log of sine of a pi. And integrating this is again uh, pretty elementary. We end up with a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a natural log of absolute value actually even absolute value here a squared minus n squared plus natural log of absolute value of a plus constant constant of integration c now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this natural log of sine of a pi as it is and on this side I have sum from n equals 1 to infinity of natural log of since we have an absolute value we can even flip these things it doesn't matter n squared minus a squared and a natural log of absolute value of a plus c and uh, now I'm going to have natural log of sine of a pi sum from n equals 1 to infinity natural log of I want to divide the numerator divide multiply and divide by n squared so if I do that if I divide by n squared here I'll have 1 minus a squared over n squared but since I divided I have to multiply by n squared and multiplication inside an argument of a natural log like this can be written as product of natural logs so sum of natural logs so natural log of n squared was this is equivalent to multiplying by n squared so it's multiplying and dividing by n squared plus natural log of a plus c so we have natural log of sine of a pi is equal to sum from n equals 1 to infinity of natural log of 1 minus a squared over n squared and here we have 2 times sum from n equals 1 to infinity of natural log of n plus natural log of absolute value of a plus c so we have natural log of sine of a pi is equal to sum of logs can be written as natural log of product of the arguments. So we can write this as natural log of product from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus a square over n squared. And this is basically um, going to be natural log we can take the product inside natural log of 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 going to infinity so it's essentially like infinity factorial but if you if you want to take some gamma regularization or uh, analytic continuation if you say then infinity factorial could be expressed as square root of 2 pi so for that this becomes a constant so this is a constant adding with a constant is another constant call it c dash and we have natural log of absolute value of a and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase everything to the um, I'm going to take exponential function on both sides or you can say anti log so I'm going to have e to the natural log of sine of a pi is equal to e times e to the rather natural log of product from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus a squared over n squared and all of this is in the argument of the exponential so c dash plus natural log of a so this becomes sine of a pi this we can write as a product again so this will be product from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus a squared over n squared 
and we still have to you know multiply by e to the c dash and e to the natural log of a which is just a so now let's take the a on that side we have sine of a pi over a is equal to e to the c dash times product from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus a squared over n squared now we actually need to act solve for this constant of integration we can't have this hanging around so on both sides take the limit as a goes to 0 so we, in order to use a standard sine formula for our limits we have to match the denominator with the argument so we multiply and divide by pi here we have limit as a tends to 0 of e to the c dash times product from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus a squared over n squared so now and this now is going to be 1 according to the limit properties of sine function so we just have pi is equal to e to the c dash and then when you substitute a as 0 we have just infinite product of 1 which is just 1 times 1 so this means e to the c dash is just pi so if we make that substitution now in, in this formula we have sine of a pi is equal to a times pi times product from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus a squared over n squared and now finally if you want to just make it look like an original textbook formula make the sub let a equal z so when we do that we have sine of pi z is equal to pi z times product from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus z squared over n squared and that my friends is the product formula of the sign the product formula of the sign and believe me this is extremely useful I'm going to use this to prove Euler's reflection formula I'm going to use this to uh, to prove uh, Wallace's product formula it's extremely useful it's a very nice identity and it's actually a break from the classic infinite sums that we had as a consequence of Taylor series having infinite products is like a break from that and it's a really really um, it's a really really nice way of representing the science really elegant if you ask me okay so I think that's it for this video so please like share and subscribe to my channel I want more subscribers at least you know my goal for now is 100 and it means a lot to me if you subscribe and are like an avid viewer on my uh, channel it feels like you know I'm doing it for the community like there are some people who are at least watching my videos kind of thing and um, I'll be back with more so stay tuned in the meantime stay home stay safe have a great day do math enjoy life and peace out